guys, welcome to the channel. A mini Tech Tuesday for you today. Do you have a C8 Corvette? Are you pulling forward, pulling out of your driveway and your brakes are squeaking? We're gonna tell you what you gotta do. Chucky, it's uh, December, and you still have Corvettes in the shop, man. Yeah, I know. You got a lot of stuff going on. You got a lot of stuff going on. Hey, that's a nice hat up there. So if your brakes are squeaking on your C8 Corvette, whether you have Z51 or not, Chuck is going to explain what hey, you have to do. Have you told him yet? About, yeah, yeah, I told him. I told him Sunday. Yeah, you guys know that I jumped the car. I told you that. Big debut coming up. We're going to talk about it? I'm not going to talk about the extent of the damage. Oh, no, no. You don't want to I talk mean, about the wheels? Or no, 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 no. The shock? I mean, no, the Chuck, no. I don't want to, no. I don't want to talk about that. We're not talking about damage it. Damage is more than I thought it was going to be. No. I, okay. There's a lot. As a matter of fact, there's one of there's one of the wheels right there. Uh -huh. More on that later. Don't forget the big jump reveal Sunday night, December 19th. If you've got a C8 Corvette, <laughs> you just got to make me feel worse than I already do, don't you? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Even you got it up in the air and you went, Rick. Yeah. And Rick, you told and really? you said, Rick, I told you so. Hmm? Oh yeah. It was bad, guys. It was bad, but <laughs> was it worth it? Yeah, I told you Sunday on the show that I just got all wacky since I got this car and I just I just don't care. I'm having fun. So I hope you enjoy, I know you will enjoy the entertaining feature that we have for you Sunday night, December 19th. Okay, back to point at hand, Tech Tuesday. Uh, if you have squeaky brakes, which I have, uh -huh. um, and I have a non-Z51, a couple of different ways you can fix that. Go ahead. Well, uh, this goes clear back to the C C7. They've now included the C8. Okay. What's happening is the brake pads are actually chattering inside the calipers. So they want you to take the brake pads out and they've got a copper grease that you put on each end of the brake pad to take up some of that clearance then between the pad and the, and the caliper okay. so that it don't sit in there and chatter because that's what's going on. It's just lightly chattering. Okay. So you take them off, front and rear, put the copper grease on them, put them back in. That takes care of them. All right, now you said mine's a non-Z51, right. so you said it would be a little bit easier to do. How's that? Well, if you look here, on the non-Z51, they're pinned, just like the C7, so you can knock the pins out, take the pads out, doctor them up, put them back in. Okay. On the Z51, with the J55 brakes, right. they're a little bigger. You have to actually take the brake caliper off okay. of the rotor and take the pads out from the inside. So okay. it's a little tougher to do those, but okay. not too bad. All right, so there's a bulletin on this. If a customer yep. brings it in, there's no cost to them. This is covered by Chevrolet, yes? Yes, as long as it's still under warranty. As long as it's still under warranty. Because okay. it is just a bulletin and not a recall. See, as you can see, there's some there, hardly any there. This is what they recommend, Permatex Copper Anti-Seed Lubricant. What I'm gonna do is put a pretty good thick layer here. I think that's And then I put a little bit here where they ride on the pistons. Okay. And that's it, back in they go. these out see there's none on here some here so what is it you're looking for well, see you can see that faint copper on there yes but they didn't put any on this side okay so we're going to put a thick layer on both sides
Then you put your retainers back in. You're done with this one and on to the next one. Takes longer to rack the car. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yep. We've also seen some questions on some of the boards about uh, how come C8 doesn't have adaptive cruise control? Taj actually addressed this question last April. Here's his answer. So adaptive cruise is available on um, many products uh, this today. Um, we talked about it uh, as part of the, uh, at the inception of the C8 program. At that time, um, there was an interpretation of the law, actually, that said you could not have um, both adaptive crews and conventional crews on the same vehicle. And so we were faced with a choice of which to do. And uh, adaptive crews requires a bunch of sensors which change the construction and, and the size of the openings in the, the front end of the car, which then uh, carries into the cooling performance of the car. Uh, so there was that aspect of it. And then others um, found adaptive crews where you're extremely conservative in how closely you can follow the car ahead of you. So if you set it, even to the closest setting, there's quite a few car lengths between you and the car in front of you. And that enables anybody who wants to, uh, to cut in between you and the car in front of you and the adaptive crew adjust by slowing you down. Um, and there's a number of us who were experiencing that at the time. So between the compromise to the vehicle and the inability to offer both. So there are situations like on a long drive, for example, where you wouldn't mind that, but a lot of people drive with traffic, heavy traffic around. And so constantly being shoved backwards when you want to have the cruise control set, uh, we thought would be an annoyance. And since it was one or the other, we fell on the side of, okay, we're going to do conventional cruise. It's a driver's car. Uh, we expect people to be uh, really engaged in the, in the driving experience. Now, since then, some cars have started to offer both. Um, and so if we get enough uh, feedback from customers that they would really like to have that, and we've heard a little bit, I would say, of that. It hasn't been a huge uh, request, uh, but if we get a, a lot of people saying they would prefer that, then when we get an opportunity uh, to offer it with a, a redesign of some sort, uh, we would think about offering it then. To Ted's point about sensor technology, the radar that looks down the road, the long range radar, we call it, um, to anticipate when you would start braking, uh, has to be pretty far up off the ground. So it works fine in an SUV or a conventional sedan uh, been in our low, sleek fascia, uh, the sensors available at the time. Of course, technology is already improving. Uh, those would have pretty dramatically impacted styling and, and cooling performance. Yeah, it would make the front end more bulbous, less, less pointy and sleek. Right. All right, Chucky, always good to see you. Nate, good to see you too there, buddy. <laughs> Not good to see that. Um, more on that coming up. Yeah. Enough about my ride. Let's check out now some of your beautiful rides. Thanks for watching.
inside is bleeding Oh, and your heart's bleeding And all you can see is red Till you discover It is within each other To forgive and make amends If I had known then Or what I know now I wouldn't have said what I said I took the long road Thought I'd be better on my own Sometimes what's right is wrong instead Cause I was too young And I didn't understand that you And I didn't understand that you were the one 